morning church. Um, if you have your Bibles this morning, um, go ahead and flip with me to Psalm 23. I'll give you a second to get there. Um, we're going to read it uh, just like we do every single Sunday as a church, as a family. Um, turn to Psalm 23 with me. Let's read this together. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Let's sing this together.
you lead us through the valley of the shadow of death. You never leave us and you never forsake us. You make our path straight. Good morning, church. Week two of digital church is kind of different. Um, I'm sure you are enjoying coming to church in your pajamas, and we don't want that to become a habit for you. But if it means you coming back to church, we would gladly see you show up in your pajamas. Um, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Joel, for leading us in worship. There's a couple announcements I want to uh, tell you guys about. We want to um, invite all of our children's ministry, that's first grade through fifth grade, and also our preschool ministry, that's our SC Tots. I'd like to invite you to their Facebook pages where they're going to have some age-appropriate Bible studies for them on Wednesdays and Sundays. So we're just trying to get a way to stay engaged with you guys. So go to the Facebook page for our children's ministry and our SC Tots for some great Bible study lessons. Also, our middle school and high school ministries, along with our adult ministry, is using Zoom. That's a video conferencing website and uh, software that will do uh, Bible studies on Wednesday nights for you guys. So if you're interested in that, go to our website, check that out, or look at the email that sent, was sent out to you guys uh, this week for some information on that. So we just want to welcome you and, and hopefully get you connected to some of these groups as we're having some of this social distancing time, which I've never heard that word ever until this week. So welcome to the new social distancing time. The first time I met Joel up to today, I hugged him just about every time I saw him. And today I did not get a hug because we're social distancing ourselves. So new age, new time, but we're embracing it. Also, we want to invite you guys to uh, continue giving. You can give through our website, give through the app, or you can also give through your bank as this time. Um, we would really appreciate that. Love to invite you to grab your Bible, open up to Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Um, this is a verse. I just want to invite you into my time. This is this is a personal testimony time. That when I first read this verse, uh, these verses years ago, when I was early on in my faith as a teenager, I read them and I loved them. I mean, I, I, I loved the truth that was behind it, and I applied it to my life for several years. Up to this day, I'm still applying it. But today, I'm applying it a little bit differently. When I was younger, I read these verses, and in fact, they kind of just blessed me, but they also cursed me, which is kind of crazy to say because as I read them and applied them to my life, it became um, crippling to me. So I want you to grab your book and look at Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, and we'll read it together. It says this, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding." all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight when I first read that as a teenager I thought well there's the, the key to life that if I acknowledge Jesus Christ if I put him center of my life everything's going to be great he'll make all the decisions for me uh, life will be perfect he'll tell me exactly what school to go to what major to, to, to major in that everything would be great if I acknowledge him but as I grew in my faith I realized that I was just sitting and waiting on the Lord, that I really wasn't doing anything. I wasn't using the gifts, abilities, and the talents that God gave me to use. I was just simply just sitting and waiting on Him, which is good, which can also be bad, because you find yourself just being paralyzed and just waiting on the Lord. You see, I want to be so obedient to Him that through my obedience, I became disobedient. I just became centered and focused on myself and not really on Him. So I drew this picture to kind of help illustrate this. You can go through life like this, and many of us go through life like this, that you are the center of your life, that through you, you make decisions on relationships, on school, on finances, on your health, on parenting, on marriage, that everything that you do goes through you, that you're the decision maker on all of these, and your path is straight. You know, I told you when I first read this scripture, I applied it to my life, but I got very frustrated when I would look around to people who didn't have Jesus in their life, and it seems like their path was straighter than mine, that their, their path was more successful than my own path when I was trying to follow Jesus. And 
And I was kind of confused that, wait a second, from your word, Jesus, you said if I acknowledge you that you'll make my path straight, but I'm looking to my left and right, and I'm struggling, and everybody else is being successful, and they don't have you in your life. And I kind of realized this, that when you put yourself in the center of your life and everything flows through you, you can be successful. You can have a great marriage. You can have wonderful finances. You can go to the right school. You can have the right degree. But you're losing the purpose. I realize that the purpose of life is Jesus. That I wasn't dumb. I was smart. God gave me some abilities to use and some gifts to use, and I could use those. You see, I realized that life was like this. That if I put Jesus in the center, that I don't just acknowledge him. You know how when I first read acknowledge, I thought, you know, you come into a, a, a party and stuff like that, and you say, hey, how you doing? You kind of acknowledge the people that's in the room. That's not what it's saying. It's saying that do I tru truly trust Jesus? It says, if I acknowledge him, if I trust him, if I put my sincere trust in him, if I acknowledge him, he will make my path straight. He'll give me purpose in life. So when I parent, I parent through Jesus. There's a purpose. My finances that I have, I, 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 I use those for a purpose. I go to school for a purpose. My health, there's a purpose there. My work has purpose. What's the purpose? See, when I fully understood that, it gave me so much more freedom that I don't have to just sit and wait for Jesus. No, I can go with Jesus. In my office, I have three images that help me remember this. So the first image is this. Hopefully you can see that. It's a picture of Jesus on the cross. And I love this image because I realize that it's only through Jesus that I can have life. That I have eternal life through Jesus. But I don't have just eternal life. I have life here on earth. I have a purpose-filled life because of Jesus. So when I look at that picture, I always think of, okay, it starts with Jesus. Jesus is my center. Jesus is my foundation. And everything goes through Jesus. But I also have this image here, too. And it helps me realize that I can be Superman. There's time in my life that I need to have some characteristics of Superman. That I looked at, here, here, here's the characteristics. I, I Googled these. So I, I want you to think I'm making these up. These are characteristics of Superman. Noble personality. Gentle. Selfless. Knowledge of right and wrong. Ability to act decisively during a crisis. I love seeing this image of Superman because it reminds me that I can do things. I can be active. I can take Jesus into a crisis and I can act decisively. I can be a protector of the, the good. I can be protector of the, those that are hurting because I'm acting like Jesus, but I have characteristics of a Superman. Here's another picture that I have. I love this guy. One of my heroes, John Wayne. I love John Wayne. Here's some characteristics of John Wayne. I Google. Here, here we go. You ready? Commitment to a mission. He's driven. He's tough. He doesn't lose his composure. And he has a never, never say quit attitude. So in life, there's times that I've got to keep going. During this challenging time that you and I are, are experiencing, my heart is broken for people who have lost their job, people whose hours have been cut, their pay has been cut, and my heart hurts for you. But my heart also hurts for those employers who are having to make those tough decisions to lay people off. That's not fun for them either. They're struggling with that. Companies that are closing or downsizing, it's a struggle. People who have lost their health care uh, because of this. Lord, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I wish I could take that away from you. And it's tough. But then there's times in our life that when those challenges come, we have to keep going. We have to be tough. We have to keep persevering. We've got to have some John Wayne in us that we're not going to be deterred. We're going to keep going. You see, in life, everything that we do as a follower of Christ is through Jesus. I realized something when I was in early in my um, college age life that Jesus was a hobby for me. That I would visit Jesus on the weekends. I would visit Jesus when it was kind of convenient. But when I got into college, I realized something. 
that the relationship with Jesus isn't a hobby. It's a way of life. That if I partner with Jesus in life, he's going to equip me to do amazing things. He's going to use me in a powerful way. There's times that i got to push on. i got to have some Superman in me. Sometimes I've got to have some John Wayne in me. i got to get it done. I just want to ask you something. Where are you? Who's the center of your life? Who's the foundation of your life? Is it you? Or is it Jesus? If it's you, you can pull it off. But you're living without a purpose. If it's Jesus, then you're living with a purpose. What do these, these things have in common? I'm going to list some products. I'm going to list a couple companies, okay? So what do these have in common? Super glue, penicillin, airbags, wristwatches, chocolate chip cookies, tea bags, Pizza Hut, 3M, Scotch tape. What, what do those have in common? All those have this in common that they are either created, developed, or expanded during trying times. All these came through wars, through the Great Depression, through uh, major tragedies, through personal loss. All these have been forced to slow down. I see our perspective changing from us to him. I see this as an exciting time because some of you are going to develop a company or a business or a product because God has gifted you in that area. Don't give up. Let's keep enduring. Let's have a lot of Jesus in us. Let's have a lot of Superman in us. Let's have some John Wayne in us. Because when we apply that to our life, we're going to live victoriously. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you so much that you love us, that you care for us, that you allow us to partner with you. Father, you are our foundation. You are our truth. God, so we are so thankful for that. I want to invite you, if you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, I don't want to just assume that everybody who's watching knows Jesus. This is a great time to come to Jesus. Let me tell you this little story of the the great exchange, and it really helps you understand what this life of Jesus is about. A dad gives his little daughter a pearl necklace. It was just a toy for a pearl necklace. She loved it. She put it on and she wore it proudly and she never took it off. And she would play with it. And she would put it in her mouth like a kid would do. And every night as the dad would tuck her into bed, he would ask her, baby, can I have that pearl necklace back? And she said, daddy, I know. I love my pearl necklace. I just want to keep it. And he said, okay, that's fine. This goes on for months. And every night the daddy would tuck her in and say, baby, can I have your pearl necklace? No, daddy, I love my pearl necklace. I want to keep my pearl necklace because I love it. Daddy said, okay, that's fine. And over the course of months, this toy pearl necklace began to break and discolor, and she's losing beads all over the house. And the daddy sits down with her at night, tucks her in, and says, baby, can I have your pearl necklace? Finally, the daughter looks at the daddy and says, daddy, you've been asking for this for a long time. I don't know why you want it because it's so broken, it's nasty, it's gross, but if you really want it, I want to give it to you. So she takes the pearl necklace off and gives it to her daddy. What the daughter didn't know is that from day one, her daddy had a real string pearl necklace willing to give it to her. That he had it in his pocket just waiting for her to give him the toy back so he could give her something real. I love that image because that's what Jesus did. Jesus looks at your life and says, baby, I love you. I want to have a relationship with you and I want to give you something so much greater just eternal life. I want to give you life right now in abundance. Would you do this exchange with me? That's a beautiful picture of what Jesus did. That he hung on the cross. He died on the cross to give you life. This is how you accept it. Ready? It's just like the little girl. She gave the pearl necklace to her daddy. In exchange, the daddy gave her something real. You want to have that exchange in your life? I just want to welcome you to do that. Accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. He is offering you a free gift. Take it. If you have any questions, I want you to email me. You can email me.
email me at Daryl, D-A-R-Y-L, at SharonChurch.com. I want to help you in your relationship with Jesus. Come to him. He wants you. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for the gift of life that you've given us. Lord, thank you that you have equipped us, love us, care for us. You have not hidden from us. You have not departed from us. Lord, during this social distancing time, you are right here in our presence, right here beside us. You are walking with us step by step, and we are so thankful. Lord, we're going to close out this service right now. We're just worshiping you. Father, may our word be a sweet blessing to you. And it's your name we pray.
sitting at home with your Bible open, you got your family around you, this is what I want you to do. Um, don't stop right now. Look at Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 33. And I want you to read that as a family. And I want you to discuss how Peter was bold enough to do things on his own. He was bold to get out of the boat. But watch what happens when Jesus was at the center of his life. We just want to encourage you to read that as a family. Talk about it. Flesh it out. And uh, we just are excited. God's word is being proclaimed through the internet and in your home. We're excited for you. Embrace the storm, embrace this time, and love each other. Love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and find ways to take him with you. God bless you. Have a great Sunday and a great rest of your week.